So about a year ago, I released this video. It was me testing e-cores on and off and seeing what really performed the best in competitive games. But a lot has changed. In 2021, Intel released their Alder Lake architecture, also known as their 12th generation CPU, such as the 12900K, 12700K, and etc. Well, the 12600K and up had what's called efficiency cores on these. Now, this was the first time that this was seen in the consumer CPUs. So what you had was you mixed performance cores, which the 7th i7 and the i9 had eight, the i5 had six, and per e efficient cores, anywhere from four to eight efficient cores, mixing them together into one CPU. These performance cores were used for typical things like, for example, rendering really hard things, gaming, all that stuff. But the efficiency cores were used for background things, such as like Windows processes, maybe Spotify running in the background, maybe like Chrome tab running, stuff that isn't as crucial to be running at super high frame rates or super high performance. To make these performance and efficient cores work better, Windows 11 was released as well as updates to Windows 10 to make the scheduler work better with these CPUs. But when I tested it back then in last year, I noticed I was getting much better performance in games disabling these efficient cores and being like, oh, just letting with the performance cores and not having to worry about a Windows scheduler really improve things. But it's 2023 now, there are brand new CPUs out. Raptor Lake is out, 13th gen, and the 13900K, which I have and was used today, has 16 efficient cores. And with that many cores, you have to think, I can't just disable all these. There has to be a performance benefit with keeping these cores enabled, especially since Raptor Lake allows for slightly faster efficient core ratios and higher ring ratios while these efficient cores were enabled. Yep, I forgot to mention back in 12th gen, when you had your efficiency cores enabled, your ring ratio had to be significantly lower, like 600 megahertz lower than with performance cores enabled, which really was the main reason behind the FPS boost. Let's go over what the test bench was. So the test bench for the 13900K was my Z690 Dark running 2x16 7800 tuned RAM. If you want to know more about that tuned RAM, check out my last video and subscribe for future videos. The GPU is the RTX 4090. All tests were at 1080p, by the way, so we're just making sure this is full CPU bound scenarios. The CPU is running at 5.7 gigahertz on the P cores, 4.4 gigahertz on the E cores, and 4.9 gigahertz on the ring. So a pretty fairly average or above average overclock for these CPUs. The games running were Modern Warfare 2, running at all low 1080p settings for competitive just nature. Counter-Strike Global Offensive, I used a custom config, a competitive config, running the benchmark map in the workshop. Rainbow Six Siege, just so we could get a Vulcan title in here. It's also a pretty competitive game still, running all low settings. And then we also had Rift Breaker. This was running the CPU test with just stock settings, whatever I loaded up the game with, hit play. So, core configs, we ran anywhere from 24 cores and 32 threads, so all 8P cores enabled and all 16 efficiency cores enabled with hyper-threading to then we tested, okay, let's just turn off hyper-threading and then let's turn on efficiency cores, keep those on. So we have 24 cores, 24 threads. This is what a lot of people I remember hearing a year ago were like, this is really good, but I did not see any good performance. After this, we just disabled the efficiency cores and turned hyper-threading back on. So eight cores, 16 threads, all performance cores. And then we disabled everything, hyper-threading, and efficiency cores and just went, okay, eight cores, eight threads, let's see how this performs. Because on my 12700K, this is actually what performed best. But now, let's get into the results. Starting off the benchmarks, we have CSGO. So this was with the workshop map, just looking at FPS, average FPS shown from the test. And as we can see, boom, hyper threading disabled, E cores enabled, does win 1060 FPS. Now, is it four FPS higher? Then just having hyperthreading enabled, yes. Are you gonna notice that 4 FPS? Absolutely not. But e cores in this game does actually benefit a pretty fair bit. Now, okay, okay. Look, disabling these e cores, you actually do not want to do in Counter Strike. Counter Strike is known as a very single threaded game, but these results really shock me. It makes me wonder if almost this game is just being pinned to the efficiency cores, when because it's just such low load. But these are all above 900 FPS. If you cannot compete with 900 FPS, you're just bad at Counter-Strike. 
Next up, we have Rift Breaker, and coming in with the win on the average FPS actually is Hyper Thinning Disabled and Ecores Disabled. So, average FPS, that is the winner. In the lows, they're all pretty equal, com except for Hyper Thinning Enabled and Ecores Enabled. So, maybe this game just has a core limit that it's not liking, or it just doesn't like having all those cores and doesn't know what to do with them. But as soon as you disabled Hyper Thinning, every other test was pretty much equal thin margin of error so with this one you can leave hyper threading disabled leave your e-cores on and you'll be fine but i really don't know anyone who actually plays rift breaker so now we have rainbow six siege this was running in vulcan with the built-in benchmark and hyper threading disabled and e-cores enabled fully destroys everything else by over 100 fps it's honestly insane how much better this is it is even winning in the lows and everything. Everything else, obviously these are obviously really high FPS. The lowest low here with hyper thing disabled and e-course disabled is 723 FPS. It all doesn't really matter. But if you want the purest max FPS, disable your hyper threading and leave your e-course enabled. Here we have Modern Warfare 2 with once again the built-in benchmark. And this is what I like to call the land of a tie. Every number is within a couple of FPS of each other. The winner, I could say, if you really want to go down to the numbers, is hyperthreading enabled, e-cores disabled, just because it has slightly better 1% lows and slightly better 0.1% lows. Average FPS is basically the same on all of these. But you're going to have the same gaming experience with every single one of these. So from these results, we can very well conclude that for most people disable your hyper threading and leave your e-cores enabled and you will be getting the best gaming experience in three out of the four games tested we did get best results with hyper threading disabled and e-cores enabled and the only game where it didn't win in was basically a tie all over the board meaning the core count itself did not matter it's insane but if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button down below. Subscribe. If you want FPS like you're seeing in this video, make sure you hit my link down below. You can pay for my service and get your PC overclocked to the max, making sure that you have the highest gaming potential. But see you guys later. Peace.